Hello, hello to all our global attendees. We're going to kick this off. Welcome to uh, tackle a top to our webinar that we're going to tackle a topic that's more and more relevant each day, how to stay connected and organized when working remotely. So just some housekeeping to reiterate as a final friendly reminder, you will receive the slides and recording in a follow up email after this. And please make use of the webinar console to ask us questions. But if we don't get to your questions, please don't hesitate to reach out on the community forum. So let's jump in. Today, you're going to hear from our EMEA People's Operation Lead, Aoife Minahan, about how we've been tackling the present moment here at Asana. Next, you'll hear from Neve Gari on our customer success team and me, Katie Rowland, to get some tips, tips and best practices and how some of those look in Asana. And then our agenda for today. We'll be focusing on solutions to the challenge of remote work, but to make the best use of your time, do ensure that you submit your questions as we are wrapping up with that live Q&A. So, with that, I am going to hand it to Eva. Thanks so much, Katie. Hi, everyone. I'm Eva Minahan, the people partner for or EMEA, Tokyo and Sydney offices. Like so many of us around the world right now, I'm also working from home. Um, advanced warning, we did just get a cockapoo puppy called Tilly who might make an unannounced appearance on this call, so just be warned. Um, first, I want to recognize that we're all in a new unknown environment where each organization is having to adapt their business practices. And at Asana, our mission is to help global teams thrive. And for my team, that means enabling our Asanas to thrive, particularly in times of crisis such as these. So I wanted to share with you how we made the shift to remote work. And honestly, this is a challenge and stressful at times. And it was really important that we grounded ourselves in guiding principles, as well as sharing guidance on how to get organized, how to stay organized, and how to earn our employees' trust. Key to those principles was prioritizing the trust and well being of our employees. Prioritization was tough. Uh, we know our employees, we've hired them, we've helped them grow. And so trust is a little bit clearer for us. But to support us in thinking about prioritization, our executives established an internal cross-functional decision-making team to bring balance and clarity to our decision-making framework. This team meets daily and they co-create on sharing communication updates with Orasana so everyone feels informed. Secondly, we wanted to make sure we weren't overreacting or lagging behind. So it was important to be connected to what was happening externally. Our executive leadership liaise with other people ops professionals where they share communication methods, their decision making processes, some of their best practices. And this really enabled us to make informed decisions fast. Thirdly, our goal was to communicate readily, clearly, but most importantly, calmly. And this was probably one of the most important pieces for us. We wanted to communicate calmly to our employees so that they felt informed and that they had clarity from us. This has meant regular communication updates to our teams at a global level. And lastly, we wanted to mitigate impact to business productivity as much as is as safely possible. Our head of people on a vendor always says if everything is important, nothing is important. And that couldn't be more true now. We've asked everyone to think about what can be deferred, maybe reprioritized, or perhaps just doesn't need to happen right now, as the number one priority is the health and well being of our employees and their loved ones at this time. As we continue to figure out this new reality, some things that come top of mind to me and how we support our employees are firstly ensuring that our teams have a central resource that's up to date. That's so crucial in supporting our workforce globally. It really helps people keep informed and connected. Secondly, being real. These times are uncertain and it's absolutely valid that people are scared and confused. And I would encourage each of you to acknowledge the legitimacy of those feelings, but also to create space to talk to your people about how they're feeling right now and how they're coping. Acknowledge that working from home, it can present different challenges. Currently, people may have childcare obligations or they might need to take care of a loved one, for example. And it's important that we provide flexibility to our people during this time. 
And finally, make sure that there's open lines of communication and that there are mechanisms of support to those who might be feeling isolated at the moment. This can be as simple as doing a remote lunch, a coffee morning, maybe a happy hour, or even an Asana project that's dedicated to what people are doing while we're practicing social distancing at this time. With all that being said, we're definitely not on the other side of things just yet. And as many of us are working from home, we're focused on making sure that our employees feel supported and know that we're in this together and that we're all gonna get through this together. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to my co-presenters, Neve and Katie. So hi everyone, thanks so much Katie and thanks so much Aoife, it's been really helpful so far, but I'm going to be covering more practical tips with you. So just to introduce myself to everyone, I'm Neve. I work on the customer success team and very much on customer education and I really focus on our interactive learning experiences. So I try to ensure that our users have a fun learning environment and so that they feel comfortable and confident with Asana. So I'm excited to be sharing with you today. We're going to be looking at how Asana uses Asana. Now over to Katie. And I am Katie. I'm on Asana's EMEA marketing team. I typically work in the Dublin office, although right now I'm working in the West of Ireland. I work on making our customers more aware of how Asana can help them and their teams and how they can be more productive. So as Eva shared, it is a whole new world. And just like you, we on the Asana team are adapting to our team working from home. Luckily, we do have a tool like Asana to help make things easier. But beyond that, we wanna share some strategies and tactics to help you and your team navigate the work from home world. So. So let's take a moment to explore why working from home can be so challenging. So in our work with customers, we've actually found that there's three key blockers to productivity. So firstly, distraction. It's probably something we can all empathize with. There are non-work priorities at home when you're outside an office that are physically close to you that aren't necessarily on your radar and so can act as a blocker to your personal productivity. Then that lack of face-to-face -face interaction can absolutely hinder communication. And then finally, a lack of access to information. So we probably all know that feeling where we're spending time pouring through email threads, through different servers, folders, trying to find that one piece of information that can help drive our project along. And it can be a massive time suck and also massively demotivating. So today we're going to cover three key concepts to help with the challenge of working with a geographically dispersed team. The first is clarity. The second is communication. And the third is cadence. So the first concept to help you work from home more effectively is clarity. What do we mean by clarity? It's having everyone on the same page about what your goals are, who's responsible for the different actions that ladder up to those goals, and knowing when those tasks are being worked on. Clarity reduces stress and confusion on a team. It actually helps us communicate what matters, and more importantly, it helps us know what matters. While this is always important to a team, I think it's especially important when we're working remotely, when communication is less frequent and can sometimes be more challenging than those in-person communication. Having clarity on your team is always important, but it becomes even more so when your team isn't sitting right next to each other. Sometimes when you don't have a manager or a coworker or a teammate right nearby, it can be easy to lose track of what your priorities are. And you may start to wonder, what am I meant to work on next? And it can be a little overwhelming. What my team personally has found helpful is we document our biggest priorities in a single weekly task, which we discuss during our Monday meeting, which is a virtual meeting now, and then complete, complete at the end of the week. By doing this, we're actually all aligned on what each team member is doing, and we can see where there's overlap and opportunities to combine work, which means there's no duplication of work. It actually also makes it clear that we've set an expectation around what work we're looking to complete in a given week. If you're working from home, I would recommend take some time with your team to make sure everyone is clear on what each team member is working on. This could be in a project or task in Asana. The key point is that there's a place where everyone can refer back to when they aren't sure what everyone is working on and working towards. So another way to ensure your team is clear on how to work at this time is to establish a product with all the information in one place for ease of use. So essentially you're establishing standard operating procedures how are you using the tools available to you and what are the processes for those tools? It can also actually be a great way to ensure continuation of company culture, even when people are geographically dispersed. So Aoife mentioned earlier about sharing how people are spending their time doing virtual coffees. 
I've actually also heard of teams sharing high points of their day within tasks. Now I'm going to pass it over to Neve and she's going to show us some cool tricks in Asana. So let's have a look at how all of this starts to look in Asana. So hopefully you're able to see my screen share of an Asana project. And this is the content teams, discussions and out of office. So we gather all of this information together and this is how we work and collaborate. So a really simple thing that you can see here right from the get go is these monthly priorities that we've all defined for the month. Now I haven't done mine, so I'm going to do that right now. Let's just see, we've got a look from Gabby. I'm going to add a task in here. And for that, let me see, hang on, add a task. I'm going to make sure to give it a clear name. So I'm going to call it needs priority. So I know that I'm working on it and I'm going to assign that to myself. Then for the due date, I want this to be for the end of the month, but I'm going to start, or I'm going to add a start date to indicate when I've started working on this from. So from yesterday to the end of the month, here are what my monthly priorities are going to be. So then in the description area, this is where I put in the context. So I've got a very clear title and now I want to give context. So anybody who sees this task is going to understand what my priorities are. And I'm going to put in these April priorities. So I'm going to say, what are my April priorities? Now you might have noticed here, this is a rich text editor. So I can put in some bold or italicized, but I'm just going to start off with simple monthly priorities. Wait. Spelling goes terrible when you've got a lot of people watching your screen. So my monthly priorities are, and let me bold that so you can see the rich text editor in action. I'm going to use this bullet points list. So one thing I can do is if I use the app mention button, you see here if I use app mention, I can reference another person or a project or a team. So I've got this Amsterdam event. Now we're going to be looking at, so yeah, virtual Amsterdam event. So that's my main thing. That's at the end of the month, if any of you want to join. I also have my monthly or sorry, weekly webinars, basics and advanced. So I can insert a link for that. That's asana.com slash guide slash trainings if you'd like to join more webinars and let's call this weekly webinars. And um, one more thing that I'm going to say is working with at Katie. I mentioned our pal here, Katie Rowland, on Amsterdam promotions. So here I've defined the main things that I'm going to be working on, but there's a few more things I can do. One is if you're this way inclined, you can add in an emoji. I'm less emoji inclined, but sure, why not? Let's put in a computer here to indicate we're working on this all online or that we're doing this remotely. So some other things that I can also do, I can add this task to my meeting with my manager. So my manager is Daniel. So you see here, this project is, you see here in projects, I can see that this project lives here, but there's a functionality in Asana called multi-homing, and that's going to allow me to let this live in another project at the same time. So you see here with this little plus button, uh, Neve and Daniel, or sorry, Daniel and Neve, I can add that. And I can also put in what section this is going into. So my monthly priorities are going to be discussed live with Daniel. And if I click here, you'll see my meeting with Daniel and also these um, April priorities. And back to our agenda. Another thing I can also see is my inbox and your inbox and my tasks. So my tasks we're going to look at now. My task is going to be really relevant for capturing all of that work that you're going to be looking at. So you can see here, I've got all the things that I plan on working on today, including this webinar. And earlier on today, I concentrated on an advanced webinar. And then this recently assigned task, this one I've just created, and I'm able to see that I've got this new priority. I'm going to say I'm going to be starting working from that today as well. Another thing that I can do is use the search feature. So this is a way of creating and running your own reports in Asana and tracking this over time. So seeing if I go up to the search bar at the top from here, so this isn't just keyword searching. If I press advanced search, I also get this reporting tool. So I'm just going to start looking for needs priorities. I can specify if it's assigned to me or in the projects, but let's just run this. And I, I want to look at all of them. So with the tasks that are previously completed and ones that are still to come and search. And you can see here, I've got all of these tasks. So I've got like my previous priorities from March, from the years before, from last year. And I just find that this is a really useful way of being able to reference any of the work that you've previously completed or any items that were previously your own priorities. And it just means that you like, if you ever need to perhaps update your CV or if you want to talk about what you've accomplished and maybe a, com a conversation about compensation, anything like this, you'll be able to track all this work that you've previously completed.
So it just makes it really easy to go into reviews or if you ever need to update your resume. So it's beneficial both short term and long term. So with that, I'm going to hand you back to Katie, but we'll be looking at more internal sound stuff very shortly. So Katie. Thank you so much, Neve. So after you've gained clarity with these helpful tips and tricks with what your team's working on, the next area is to focus on is communication. So when you can just swivel your chair to talk to a coworker, communication is obviously pretty easy. But when you're working from home, staying in contact and using the right channels to do so becomes extra important and extra challenging. So most teams have a lot of tools at their disposal, which can make communication challenging if your team hasn't decided in advance what each channel is for. So you'll want to set guidelines around your communication channels. Decide on what tools you're using and for what purposes. Spend some time with your team discussing the array of channels you have and agree together what works for you. I would make sure to document these guidelines and put them in a place where everyone can refer back to them easily. And Asana Project is the perfect place to do that. Also, when it comes to communication, when you're working from home and your team isn't right there with you, don't be afraid to over communicate. You and everyone else needs to stay in the loop. Of course, there's more to teamwork than just communicating around completing tasks. As Aoife mentioned, make sure to set up some time to just be together with your team. It can be lonely working from home and it's hard to get that same water cooler chat feeling when you aren't around one another. So set up a quick team call or video chat once or twice a week just to check in and see everyone's faces. Personally, we're doing weekly virtual lunches and they're working really, really well. So here's an example of how you can manage your different communication channels. For instance, here at Asana, we use Slack for quick questions and chit chat, Zoom for our video calls, and Asana for comments, questions, or decisions that are project or task specific related. So they're actionable items. The only time we use email is for external vendors or partners. We also generally have a soft rule. If there's more than four comments at one time on a task, it's probably best practice to hop on a call to discuss this, just so nothing gets lost in communication, be that through tone, as can sometimes happen. So Neve's going to show us some quick communication tips. All right. So hopefully now you'll be able to see my Slack. So here's our, I mean, Sana Slack and myself and Katie discussing some of the topics that we're, we're going to cover today. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are using Slack or other conversation tools at the moment because like it really is the lifeline to other people depending on how isolated you can be but just to talk about how we can capture some of our work from these communication tools so you see here I can just look at any of the slides that Katie has sent me if I hover over here so there's a slack and asana integration and what I could do once I've set that up is with more actions I've got these options here so some shortcuts I've created and with the slack and Slack integration. I can add the task as a comment or create a brand new task or actually here's another tool that I use Lattice but it's, um, it's a HR tool. So just like for the moment what I'm going to do is create a brand new task and this is going to allow me to correctly or directly add this um, content directly to an Asana project. So I'm going to call this let's say remote work, oops, remote work slides I can also define the assignee here, although you don't have to, it is an option. For the project, I'm going to say it's the example content one that we used. Yeah, there we go. For the due date, again, I can add this in. So we'll be finish this week's promotions of this webinar by tomorrow. So I'll add this in for tomorrow, created from Slack. And I can also even, again, add in a bit more context, just in case I want to see where this came from later. I created from Slack, following a conversation with Katie. And now I can create the task. And if I look here, back to my search, if I go to this actual project, you'll see this has been added in directly. So it's added in the remote work slides, we've got tomorrow's due date, and exactly have you put in following conversation with Katie. So that's a really quick way to add in your content or anything that you're discussing so that like your actionable items don't get lost in the chit chat. But please note this actually works with a few different tools. So there's a lot of apps and integrations and to check where they are, that's just the question mark and apps and integrations. But I'll hand you back to Katie. So hopefully now you're clear on that. Thank you, Neve. So the last area we would like to discuss around working from home is cadence. And this is probably the topic that comes up the most when people say, how can I stay motivated when I'm not in the office? So when we go to the office, many of the typical rhythms of work are already in place. 
We know what hours the office is open. We know when to show up for work. Lunch typically happens around the same time for most people. When the day is over, it's pretty clear that hopefully everyone goes home. The routine is already set up for us, so it's actually very easy to follow. However, when we start working from home, none of those structures are in place. Boundaries can tend to get really blurred. It's easy to start work right when you wake up. Then we forget to eat because there's nobody there to have lunch with. Suddenly doing the laundry seems like a priority in the afternoon. Our work day doesn't necessarily end at a typical time because we're already home and we may have our laptop open on our lap. It's really important to set a proper work cadence for you and your team. So agree with your team on what your working hours are going to be and make sure this is clearly communicated to everyone. This could be put in your Slack or Asana profile or your calendar or actually in your email signature if you feel that's appropriate. As Eva mentioned, flexibility based on childcare and other non-work priorities is really important. People have different obligations at this time and it's really important that we as coworkers and teams acknowledge that. In structuring your daily cadence, have regular times when you take breaks and have lunch. I would imagine you have similar structures to you do at the office, so abide by them. Of course, things can be more flexible since, for example, you don't have a commute time anymore, but it's good practice to have boundaries and structure for your day. A great thing you and your team can do to help everyone adapt to working from home is actually start collecting tips from across your team on work from home strategies. No one's experience is the same in this instance. And so that can be really, really valuable. And um, everyone adapts to this new work style in a different way. And so sharing those learnings can be really helpful. We do it in an Asana project. You could do it in a document if you need, but that repository of tips can be really helpful when people are feeling a lack of motivation and they just need a bit of inspiration. So Neve is gonna show us how to set some boundaries in Asana. All right, so back into my Asana instance. So just to talk you through, and we're gonna bring you through some older features that you might be familiar with and a brand new one. So if I scroll up to the top right-hand side where my profile icon is, if I click here, I'm able to go into my profile settings. And here's where I can set a lot of information and also define how people and how and when people can contact me or um, notify me. So from here, I can put in my name, my pronouns, you can put in your role and your department, but also in the about me, I think this is a good way that you let people know how you like to work. So I let people know that I'm located in Dublin and actually I should probably put in a bit more information now that we're all remote, just saying like what time I prefer to take my lunch hours at and also telling people, please feel free to come and to direct message me on Slack again, if it's anything quick, but if it's something that you require me to action, I want you to assign me a task in Asana. Things I can do here as well is show me as a way. So I can indicate what will happen is that my name will be grayed out. I can say that I can see here what it looks like. So I can put in I'm away through today or set that for being up until yeah, tomorrow. Maybe after this webinar, I'll be so exhausted. I'm going to chill out for the rest of the day. What I can do as well, and here's a like pro tip of what we do in Asana, if you are marking yourself away or if you're going to be taking time out, just put it in your name so you can say as well, out of office and letting people know. As you see here, now everybody's able to see that I'm out of office and I'm going to be away until tomorrow. And here as well, I can also say, send me push notifications while I'm away. Maybe I'm the type who really wants to keep up to speed while I'm away and I can't relax. Or maybe I want to say, no, no push notifications. But I can have more decisions about my notifications and communication here under the notifications tab. So just to tell you about email notifications, just quickly, um, you might, especially if you're very unfamiliar with remote working or getting into practice with using a remote working tool, you might prefer to get some email updates and you can choose here the level of email updates from Asana. And you can also set browser notifications. So let you know if there any task you're working on has been updated or if you've been uh, mentioned at all or saying, nope, I do not want to receive a browser level notification. And you can also put do not disturb. So all notifications will be paused. And you can also put in your schedule. So do not disturb me. So I'm not gonna get any notifications from Asana after 5 p.m. because that's when I clock off until 9 a.m. the next day. And you can also put in saying that like my days off are Saturday and Sunday. Sorry, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. But again, maybe due, due to childcare or needing to take care of um, an older relative, you might need to say, actually, I'm not going to be available as much anymore on Wednesdays. I need to take that time off during this period. So you can define that here. And on your days off, 
this will not send you or Asana will not send you any notifications. So it's a good way of getting peace of mind and that you also know that you're not going to be disturbed. And when your colleagues have these settings in, you know that you're not going to be disturbing them either. So back over to Katie. Thank you, Neve. While this is obviously no way, in no way an exhaustive set of work from home strategies, by focusing on clarity, communication and cadence, we really believe that you and your team can start to work together more effectively, regardless of where you're doing that work from. So now we would like to turn things over to you. Do you have a question about working from home and um, maybe a tip or strategy that's been working for you? We absolutely want to hear. So just add your question or comment in the question box and we will jump into them. I see we've already had a number of questions, so I'll jump into the first one. Um, there's a question, how do you create a new routine? And I think we can always funnel that back to creating structure. Sit down, think about what obligations you may have and work around those. And I, as um, Neve mentioned and showed, set some goals and milestones, be it daily, weekly, so you can determine what you're doing that week. It's really important. Okay, someone else has asked, how do you communicate and schedule out work breaks and working hours? I think um, the way Neve has just demonstrated, um, there's a few different ways to do that, but the main thing is to be clear and consistent about your working hours and use the tools you have. So Slack statuses can be really helpful. Update your Asana profile, as we've just seen. And if it's appropriate, mark your Gmail calendar. I personally um, mark off um, if I have obligations and it means people don't, won't schedule over it. How can you, someone else has asked, how can we manage distractions effectively? Young children, house tasks, etc. I think that's obviously very challenging. And that comes back to what Aoife spoke about earlier. We're in a brand new age and it's very important that we all are very cognizant that people have other obligations. That being said, for you personally, it's about creating that workspace and being flexible in what you can achieve given the circumstances. So if you have childcare obligations, be very clear and concise with your coworkers about that, but set time aside where you can achieve the tasks that you need to do and that are a priority. Someone else has asked, what is the number one tip working from home? For me personally, I would say is create a dedicated workspace. So it's very tempting to sit on the couch and do your work. We're all guilty of it. But I think to create that structure and for you to create real product, productive work, um, having a dedicated workspace is important. It gets you in the right mindset. And it almost feels like you're going to the office when you're sitting in that space. Neep, do you have a personal work tip you wanted, working from home tip you wanted to share? Um, so like I don't have the luxury of a lot of space. Mm -hmm. um, so I find like keeping that some of the routine that I'm familiar with is really helpful. Like to be perfectly honest with you, putting on my makeup and also knowing that I'm going to have. So actually a pretty cool thing that we have that's an integration between Slack and Asana is this bot where with my teammates then we'd like write down our daily priorities so between like just getting that work feeling of like okay i put on my face i'm ready to go and here i've got like normally i do it at about half eight i define my priorities so it's just getting into that mindset rather than just sitting on the couch absolutely yeah i, I completely agree um and not wearing tracksuits every day makes an impact I think. <laughs> So, um, someone else actually, and this is really um, relevant for us because Asana is such a global country, a, a company. Um, someone has asked, what advice do you have for those working with teams in different time zones? Example, I work with people in North America and I'm in South Africa. So that's, we work a lot, myself and Eve, with the San Francisco team. And so as we're finishing our day, they are just starting. And I think it very much is about setting clear guidelines between both offices on what the expectation is and that there should be some flexibility. Maybe bi-weekly you change it so that some team members aren't doing their meetings at 7 p.m. every week. Some people every second week, the other team could maybe be taking an earlier meeting. And that's what's worked for us. And communication, um, having a pre-read for a meeting can be really helpful so that you can concentrate, the meeting is very actionable and you can concentrate on what actually needs to be discussed live in the meeting you've set aside. There is a question here about how to raise employee morale, um, which is obviously incredibly important at this time. I think, as Aoife said, it's, it is a challenging time. People are unsure and those feelings are completely valid. Um, 
in order to raise morale, small things can make a big difference. So avoiding that feeling of isolating, isolation people might experience, that could be scheduling virtual coffee breaks, scheduling a team virtual lunch, or even just hopping on for a quick hello and seeing people's face to check in how they're doing. I know some of our customers have been getting really experimental in this, in, it be it creating tasks or projects around what Netflix people are watching or what activities they've taken up in hobbies, or is there certain tasks that they plan to do during this time of social distancing? So those are kind of fun ways that you can interact with your team on a virtual level while maintaining that physical distance that we need to right now. Just checking here if there's any. Um, so, um, there's a question here. Is there any indicator to say that you work from home instead of in the office? So as Neve just showed there, you can update your personal preference um, on your profile so that when people click on it, you can, they can see where you're working from. That's a really easy way for it to, to do it. And even the best thing is probably to update it within your name. So as soon as someone tags it, they'll see immediately where you're working from. I can just show that quickly just so you can see what that looks like in real life. So you see if I have my profile where it's my full name, I can just say working from home and save that change. So now everybody, if they see any tasks that I've created, it's going to update saying Neve is working from home. And if you hover over it, you can see my profile as well. That's great. Someone here has actually mentioned that um, they don't use any other communication channels like Slack or Skype. The only tool they use is Asana. So how do they manage that quick communication? And there's a few different ways they can do that. Isn't that correct? Me? But comments is probably the best way to do it. Um, you could do it within the description, but comments is likely that quick communication. If you have a task set aside for that, uh, you can manage all that communication in one place. Yeah, so what I would say is define what you're de talking about. So if it's related to a specific task, what you can do is there's a comment box on the task. So from there, you can comment and just like I say, okay, checking in and have a discussion about the updates. And anybody who's a collaborator here is going to be informed about this comment. Then there's also project level updates that so you can have. So maybe you want to have the progress. You can set a status saying this is all going grand. And now everybody who's a member of this project is going to be updated on the progress. And then this progress area, it also filters into conversations. So you can have project level discussions. So again, if there's any updates that you want shared out about a specific project, you can again be specific here and let people know what's going on with your project. And lastly, just to give you an, one more example, there's also team level communication. And this could be a good way for any general conversations with your teams. Let me just scroll down to, let's say the customer success team. Now from here, you'll see there's a conversations area. And I'm able to add in, so you see this actually, we're being updated about remote work Q&A, but for any team level conversation. So if there's updates that we want people to know across a certain department, or we actually have a staff conversations team or a staff team that we put conversations in, if absolutely everybody that's an employee needs to know, those are the levels that we use. So hopefully that's giving you some ideas of how you can communicate about different things and the different levels in Asana. That's great. Thanks, Neve. And there's actually a question that's somewhat related to that. How do you ensure good communication practices across the team? And I think it comes back to setting standard operating, uh, set, set, setting those standard operating procedures for your team. So what works for you and documenting them specifically where someone can get them where they're very easy to access so that everyone's aware of what those practices should be and how to follow them. And then we have a question here. How do you stay focused on work amidst the daily news and updates? Um, I think that comes back to a personal preference. Um, for me, I am managing notifications. And at the start of this situation, was consistently getting notifications from news outlets, whereas now I just get one daily digest, and that's works for me. It's very much about figuring out what works for you and how you can manage the communication flow for yourself. Need. there's a question here about subtasks. Any example of how to use them, how they should be used, and what kind of priority do they have? Yeah, okay, just to show you then, or if anybody's unfamiliar with subtasks, let me just go to this project that we were looking at here. And, and yeah, I can use my April priorities, why not? 
So to show you, this is what we call a normal task. You've seen that. Subtasks, so there are two ways to add them in case you're unfamiliar. One is here, add subtask, and I'll just call this example one. And there's another way to do this See up at the top beside the attachments area. I can add in another subtask and we'll just call it example two. And with subtasks, there's some of the similar behavior and then some caveats as well. So just to show you, I can add in um, a due date, say this for today, and I can say that um, I'm going to work on it. And if I click in here, this is where I can put in the description. So again, we've got that rich text editor. And within the subtask, I'm able to see um, what task this is a child of, so the parent's task, and also the two projects that this task is going to live in. Now, why people use subtasks? It can be just it's like simply if you have additional components of the task. And some people also like to see them as being like, um, they like to like, maybe you've got lots of different steps to take. So here's going to be the task. So it's going to be the overall task. And then if you have lots of different steps or components, defining them out in the subtask. So like, for example, with the webinars that I run, we have lots of different subtasks just to like give people, if they're not so familiar with the steps to take, like how to schedule this in Zoom and why and do you add people into the demo space? And then just to show you a little bit more about subtasks, if you see here on the project level from my April priorities, you're able to see that there are two subtasks within, so this little icon here. Also, if I click on the um, drop down menu, it'll open them up there. So you'll be able to see the subtasks. So again, the usage of them is quite variable. Some people like to use them as being like different components of the task. Other people like to use them for very specific instructions, but this is how you can visualize them. Let me know if that answered it for you. Super, I think um, we are coming up to on time and there's a few things you wanna cover at the end. So Neve, for the final question, what is your favorite Asana functionality that you feel people should be moving, using more? Um, two features that I really like, so advanced search reports. So I think that people are, can be unaware about using Asana for reporting purposes. So using that advanced search, you can create your own report like um, based on certain people. And even just to show you, like I make a lot of um, suggestions for feature requests. So we've got this report based on, like it's actually called Voice of Customer Insights. So I'm able to track all of the things that I've requested for our customers. And you see all of these submissions. So that's one thing I really like. And then because this might be less or less of an exciting time at the moment or a bit more gloomy is one feature that maybe people don't know about tab and B. Yes, you can fill your screen with loads and loads of cats. You can fill it up almost entirely with cats. So maybe if you're one of those people who's listening to the news all the time and it's yet again, something not great, maybe just add a cat to your screen. Super. I think aside from the cats, my favorite feature would probably be what just launched last week, Do Not Disturb. Um, it's a bit of a game changer for me um, and it's really good for setting those boundaries. So thank you so much for all your questions. Um, that looks like our last question that we'll be covering, but with that, we'll wrap up our webinar. As I said at the start, we are all in this new reality together. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you can continue this conversation and share your tips, questions, and ideas in our forum conversation. We'll share the link with you after this webinar. And additionally, so let me see here. So yeah, um, so please continue the conversation. Um, we've got sharing tips. We've got some more information about questions. There's also going to be lots of information on our blog. Or if you ever need a bit of help and hand from support, that's just simply asana.com slash support. And all of this information will be included in the follow-up. And finally, Asana is currently offering free subscriptions to organizations that are on the front lines of fighting COVID-19. So if you work at one of these organizations, please feel free to share this link and we will be sharing the slides. Also feel free to share this within your networks. Thank you so much for attending. Have a lovely day. Thanks everyone. Bye.